So we looked at New Orleans and figured out what were the things that people remember of those locations and the, uh, the landmarks, the points of interest, the culture, and we wanted to bring that to our version of it, but we didn't want to be confined to the real lay of the land. And we wanted to be able to bring things that make games exciting. So the thing about making 1968 authentic for New Bordeaux is not just what happened in 1968, but everything that preceded 1968. For example, when you're listening to the radio, you're hearing everything from the 1960s, the 1950s, the 1940s. The same can be said for the architecture of the world as well. You're dealing with things that have existed for the past century. So with this historical context of what happens in New Orleans and what happens in our version in New Bordeaux, we are able to weave that into the background history of each neighborhood that the player is going to encounter. New Orleans is an old city. There's stuff from the turn of the century, the 20s and 30s. You know, that's scattered around and people may not be aware of all of that stuff. We structure the city in a way that has you going out into these areas that are very, very unique but then always in the flow of the game is driving you back through things that are more familiar and more accessible to the new player. What we're trying to do with the city is present this facade of this is New Bordeaux in 1960s and this is how it feels for the people that live there. And then the moment you turn down the wrong street, you see what the Mafia has done to the city and the, and the sort of reality of that. In Mafia 3, we wanted to really make sure that we were offering players a truly open world that is actually full of life. And by using all of these systems, instead of trying to script it or hand do every single thing, we're using these hand done scenes and then employing them in a systemic way to kind of make sure that every player is seeing something different. And even a given player is seeing something different when they go to Canal Street the first time and the third time and the 17th time because you know it's a big open world game and you're going to be going back and forth across the city so we want to make sure that it, it always feels alive and present and different every time that you're you're seeing an area. Our protagonist is a black man and a Vietnam War veteran in the deep south in the 1960s. The combination of our character and our setting is going to inform everything the player experiences from high-speed car chases to what happens when they walk into a convenience store. So right away that tells you that the relationship between the player character and the game world is going to be unlike anything realized to date in an open world game.